More than 10 years have passed since Superstorm Sandy struck New York and New Jersey, resulting in the loss of many lives and causing damages worth billions of dollars. While powerful winds and heavy rainfall contributed to the destruction, flooding from high waves and storm surges caused the greatest damage. After the storm had passed, an area of over 50 square miles was submerged, with 17% of New York City being underwater. The regions that were particularly affected by flooding included coastal Brooklyn, Queens, southern Manhattan, and Staten Island, which are located in low-lying and vulnerable areas. The storm endangered the city's critical infrastructure, such as hospitals, power stations, and wastewater treatment plants. Several subway lines and roads remained shut down for days and even weeks. Even after a decade, crews are still working to repair the damage done to the train tunnels that run beneath the Hudson River and are over a century old. The flooding caused by Sandy has gradually eroded the tunnel's concrete and intricate network of electrical cables that power them. The situation could have been worse, as the three major airports, shipping infrastructure, oil tanks, and refineries in the area are all located near the city's 520 miles of coastline, making them vulnerable to floods and rising sea levels. The situation is already critical, as approximately 2.5 million New Yorkers live in the 100-year floodplain, which means they face a 1% chance of experiencing a significant catastrophe each year. Additionally, the city has lost much of its coastal marshlands and sand dunes which once served as natural defenses against rising sea levels and storms, and safeguarded residents in low-lying communities. According to the city's projections, by the 2050, more than one-third of Lower Manhattan will be at risk of a storm surge, and by the end of the century, the area will have seen a sea level rise of over six feet. Even under clear skies, one out of every five streets in the neighborhood could be flooded daily by rising tides. This is a wake-up call for New York City. Local jurisdictions have begun to plan and build barriers against future storms, but many believe that the only real solution is a comprehensive plan that provides protection for the entire New York Harbor region. The cost of such a project is out of reach for cities and states, and it requires a level of funding that only the federal government can provide. After years of study and delay, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers released a 500-plus page report in September 2022 detailing a proposal to fortify the New York City metropolitan area against future storms. The document makes the case for a technically feasible, environmentally acceptable, and economically justified project that will manage coastal storm risk while supporting the study area's economic and community resilience. This plan, known as Alternative 3B, is one of five options presented in the report and was selected through cost-benefit analysis and predictions of performance over a 50-year period, beginning in 2044. According to the report, the plan should cost $52.6 billion, making it one of the largest infrastructure projects in the city's history. The federal government would provide 65% of the funding. The other 35% will be the responsibility of the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection and the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. The $52 billion proposal would be the largest project yet to combat storm surge and sea level rise in the region, and the only course of action ever taken to protect the entire New York Harbor region. The plan calls for 12 storm surge gates to be built in New York and New Jersey waterways, tidal streets, and at the mouths of canals and creeks surrounding New York Harbor. An earlier proposal envisioned a single five-mile storm surge barrier across the mouth of the lower New York Bay, stretching from New Jersey to Queens, augmented by a second barrier built on the Upper East River. That plan was abandoned in 2020 after President Donald Trump criticized it, which at one point carried a cost estimate of $119 billion and which some experts said could harm the environment and might not even work. 
Along with the dozen surge gates, the updated proposal for New York City's coastal storm risk management includes over 40 miles of artificial shore barriers, such as flood walls and elevated walkways in Lower Manhattan, East Harlem, and Jersey City, significantly transforming the city's waterfront. If the plan is approved, construction would not begin until 2030 and would take 14 years to complete. Even if everything goes as planned, it will take another 21 years for the metropolitan area to reap the project's protections. In the meantime, the city can anticipate sea level rises of between 8 and 30 inches by 2050, as estimated by the New York City Panel on Climate Change. By the end of the century, these figures are predicted to double. While many local environmental groups advocate for significant investment in climate change adaptation, they express concerns with the Corps of Engineers' proposed solutions. Those who oppose the plan contend that the concentration solely on storm surges is inadequate. While closing gates during major storms may provide some protection, they are not designed to defend against rising sea levels, flooding from heightened rainfall, and increasing groundwater, all of which pose a danger to inland neighborhoods. Critics also contend that the Army Corps of Engineers is relying on outdated climate projections that are more optimistic than studies done by the New York City Panel on Climate Change and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. There is also concern that the storm gates could disrupt tidal energy, devastate marine ecosystems, jeopardize fish migration, and trap combined sewer overflows and rainwater runoff. Three of the waterways where surge gates have been suggested are Superfund sites, among the most polluted water bodies in the nation. There are fears that hazardous pollutants could be agitated during the building and operation of the gates. Shutting the gates, an event that is projected to happen more frequently, would trap pollutants and obstruct the continuing cleanup efforts that have been ongoing for decades. The cost of the Army Corps' proposal may be high, but projections show even higher damages from storm surge and sea level rise without it. Without the proposed storm surge and flood protections, officials predict that the region would suffer annual damages averaging $5.1 billion by 2030 and $13.7 billion by the end of the century. However, the Army Corps predicts that its projects would result in a net benefit of $3.7 billion per year over the next 50 years. The plan will buy the region some time, but experts warn that sea walls and other infrastructure will ultimately be overcome by encroaching seas. In the end, the government may need to relocate residents from New York's low-lying areas. Until a long-term comprehensive plan is put in place, New York and New Jersey will remain vulnerable to storms and sea level rise. The Army Corps proposal is a good start, but it is necessary to bring together community members and environmental organizations to have transparent conversations about the benefits, drawbacks, and uncertainties of the engineered projects before proceeding with the plan. What are your thoughts on this major plan to save New York City from rising seas? Leave a comment below and let us know. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.